Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's episode of All About Canadian Books. Today's guest is author David Giuliano and his book is The Undertaking of Billy Buffoni. David has been kind enough to agree to read an excerpt from his novel, but before he reads, David, can you tell us uh, what it would be a writing tip for aspiring writers? Uh, well, um, I, I suppose the one that has always been helpful to me is uh, leave out the parts that you skip over when you're reading yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, there's some beautiful uh, <laughs> yeah. long descriptions of places or yeah. whatever, and and I have to admit, I'm I'm uh, I enjoy characters and I enjoy the narrative, um, but. Somehow, if you uh, find that precious gem in that description and let that stand alone rather than uh, building on it all the time, that, that's that's been helpful to me. You know, in, yeah. in I'm I'm working on a novel now, and I'm right now the editing portion is going through and hacking off the things that don't need to be there. So. <laughs> That can be hard because we get attached to these pieces. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Before you read, David, was wondering if you could just share with us why you've chosen to read this particular excerpt. Well, it's just, it, it, it's a segue into the, the story. And um, it's uh, early in the book and early in the story. And it describes... Um, the events, uh, a little bit of the events at Scouter Churley's camp, uh, who okay. is the uh, the pedophile in the story who uh, has been preying on uh, members of the scout group uh, for a long time, mm -hmm. taking them up to his camp and, uh, quote, partying uh, together yeah. with the older boys. So, and I'll just read a short piece, I think. Is that probably best? Absolutely. I, I find on video it's, yeah. Yeah, no, okay. that's perfect. Okay, and so it's being narr narrated by uh, Matthew, who has uh, is has uh, died by suicide, and and is narrating the story as it goes forward. It was on the third trip up the lake that Scouter Shirley introduced us to the masturbation game. We had been flipping through porn magazines and feigning intellectual curiosity when Anthony went outside to pee and in all probability to jerk off. Shirley taunted him from the window that he wasn't allowed back inside until, quote, you choke that chicken. Larry and I, our damp swimsuits bulging, joined Shirley at the window. We couldn't see Anthony in the dark shadows among the trees, but cheered him on. When he returned, we slapped his back like he'd scored a hat trick for the Thunderbirds. His face flushed, he grinned, both grateful for and confused by our congratulations. From then on, if one of us went outside while we were, quote, partying, we were barred from the camp until we masturbated. Shirley continued to cheer from the window. After a while, we didn't bother going outside. Mosquitoes, it's pretty dark inside too. At the end of the night, we would take a raucous poll as to who it would be knighted the, quote, drunkest boy. This was the boy who was often already passed out or close to it. Shirley and the two other boys would chant, drunkest, 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 and carry him into the back room and drop him on the lump lumpy mattress to spend the night with Shirley. The drunkest boy slept with Scouter Shirley. The drunkest boys bedded, the less drunk boys bedded down on two dusty couches in, the sleep in sleeping bags lined with flannel printed with bird, dog, and hunter patterns. They pretended not to hear the whispering and the groans on the other side of the paneled wall, as though the fraying drape pulled across the doorway to the bedroom could keep a secret. The following morning, we avoided one another's eyes. Shirley was quiet in the mornings as well. We claimed we were too drunk to remember the preceding night. In my case, that was becoming frequently true. Some mornings, I really couldn't remember much from the night before. Oh, it's, it's so powerful. It's just so powerful. When I first started reading 
David, if I may say, I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep reading um, because you got me right there. Like, and I am so glad I did because there's so much to this story and uh, it's an important story to be told because, you know, it's happening in so many places. So, um, and there's just so much to your novel. I really enjoyed it. And my question to you as a writer, I mean, you have to go into all of these dark scenarios. How did you, what did you do to come out of it and, and you know, just be in a positive um, frame of mind? Sorry, I'm stumbling through my words here. Well, I, I think of uh, really, I, I didn't find it like I came out of it feeling dark or whatever, because I think uh, I, a number of people have mentioned the first chapter really is a killer. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And I thought, yeah, maybe I should have eased into that a little bit more. But, you know, I, I like the, the intensity and like, let's not bullshit. This is yes. what the book is going to be about. Yeah. But I also uh, had the care that you, we mentioned, Billy is a quirky kind of guy. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, different characters and you know, in a small town, it's like that. And so there's also an element of humor and balance. And it was really important for me to yes. present uh, not only the, the uh, Charlie's victims, but other people as three-dimensional people. And, and so uh, I often find when I read books about uh, trauma or abuse, uh, they're, they're very, um, like, sometimes it feels like all these people are is they're suffering. And uh, I, I also have experienced in folks who've, who've lived through really hard stuff, great humor and, and joy and appreciation for life, as well as, and I sort of immediately think of uh, Blake's line about uh, joy and uh, sorrow woven yeah. fine, I think it is, or, you know, and I, I think life's like that, that, that there is a dimensionality to it that, you know, uh, so I, I enjoyed it. Those, writing those parts uh, uh, were only challenging in the sense that wanting to uh, not not uh, fetishize it, you know, not you know make it something that uh, you know it's just there to to titillate someone or, or make them feel uh, drawn to the you know it's like driving by a car accident, you know, um, yeah. 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 But yeah, I didn't I didn't feel super dark writing those more the relief in some ways there's a yeah. uh, cathartic element in writing those as well. Wow. Well, thank you so much, David. David Giuliano, his book is The Undertaking of Billy Buffoni. It's a great read. I highly encourage everyone to read it. Links down below. Um, to David and Latitude 46's website so you can purchase a copy. Thank you for watching. And David, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. Thanks, Crystal. My pleasure. <laughs>